There's a large literature on something called the innovator's dilemma. Mm. The innovator's dilemma was popularized by a fellow named Clay Christensen from the Harvard Business School. And that research is focusing on how to create disruptive technologies, kind of like the iPhone. And of course, every firm would like to have that disruptive technology. But the reality is the mass, mass amount of firms out there are going to be followers. And so what we focus on is this dilemma. When a shock comes along, uh, are you going to be able to reposition in a, in a profitable place? Are you going to have to exit the industry? Are you going to be able to compete with that, that new firm or that, that new uh, innovation? So this turns out to be a follower's dilemma. Mm. Now, we got into this because there's already a literature out there called the dominant design literature. And in this literature, what people focus on is that when one product becomes so popular that all the competitors adopt a very similar architecture, then usually at that moment in the industry, everything switches to price competition. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of exit, sure. economies of scale matter and whatnot. And so most of the research around dominant design just takes as a matter of fact that the dominant design emerges and focuses on the competition after the fact. Mm -hmm. Our focus is different. What we show is that dominant design is the result of an innovation shock that might have occurred 10, 12 years before. And so our interest is when that shock occurs, how will everybody else respond? And that really hasn't been studied very much. How does a firm take your research and apply it to their individual needs? That's a great question. Well, first of all, let's assume there's an innovation shock. And usually within a few months, you can figure it out because lots of people are buying those products or services. A key part of our paper is we focus on something called comparative adjustment costs. That is, for me as a firm, let's say, to move to a new position in the marketplace, it's going to take some time and money. I have to go through a cultural change. I might have to install new capabilities, make new investments. And what we focus on is at least comparatively assessing what those adjustment costs are in relation to the different possible strategic positions. Mm -hmm. So how costly and timely will it be for me to copy the shock or to differentiate from the shock or frankly to exit the industry? Mm -hmm. We believe that you can assess these different costs in a very straightforward manner. It's not something that scholars focus on now. It's not something that if you go to almost any strategy book, you'll see people talking about comparative adjustment costs. From our perspective, comparative adjustment costs are the key to the game and you can estimate them. And that will give you guidance in terms of how you should respond as a firm to an innovation shock. How should firms think about innovation shocks? And how should they prepare for them? And how mobile do they need to be to adjust to the event of an innovation shock? I think it's difficult for firms to be prepared for innovation shocks. Innovation shocks can occur multiple times in the same industry. Uh, so it's, it's difficult to know if they're going to occur and when they're going to occur. Uh, nonetheless, there are a few strategies you might consider. Uh, as a firm, you might want to invest in keeping your adjustment costs low. You might want to have R&D projects going on in different areas outside of your current product or service. You might want to keep track of different companies in the industry so that if there is a shock, you can figure out who to buy, when to buy, how much to pay for that purchase. Uh, another area is intellectual property. You might want to be active in patenting so that if a shock comes along, you're ready to reposition as opposed to being unready to reposition. So these are different things you can do in preparation for innovation shock. 